wedding present performed by David Gedge at Leeds University in 1985. They've since released three albums and toured the world, yet they still live in Yorkshire and late last year played the Doncaster Ritzy, where they were also filming a new video. Just last year, the wedding present released 12 limited edition singles, each with its own video, and all of them entered the chart. Well, what we've set out to do is uh, basically change the way we work for a year. And, uh, you know, we've, we've done like three LPs now, and we thought, well, you know, we could just go and do another LP. Or we could actually just, you know, try and do something a bit, well, fundamentally different, really, which was to release a single every month. And, uh, once we'd established, you know, that you know, there's a way of doing that, you know, it, it just kind of escalated, and all of a sudden there was this massive project, which was, you know, you know, these seven-inch singles, and uh, they'd all form a series, and uh, and we do a video for each one, and we do a cover version of the B-sides, and you know, like in the space of a, a couple of days, it, it seemed like a perfectly, you know, perfectly obvious and realistic thing to do, and. Uh, and I suppose we're coming to the end of it now, really. You know, we've done all the re the records and we've just finished making the videos. And it's been like like a magazine. You know, it's like you know, here's, here's this month's issue of the wedding present. And it's been uh, it's been hectic and very you know nerve wracking in some ways because we didn't really write the songs beforehand. We thought that'd be a bit of a cop out. So we've actually written them as we've gone along and then recorded a few and then you know it's been like a cycle. And uh, there's been like the odd occasion where, oh, flipping neck, it's the end of the month and we haven't, you know, <laughs> we haven't written the fourth song yet. But uh, it seems to have worked, I think. Well, actually, I was born in Leeds and I, went, I grew up in Manchester and I returned to Leeds University. And then when I was faced with the prospect of getting, you know, as you uh, mentioned earlier, a proper job, and you know, we decided that uh, probably it was an opportune time to actually release a record and get famous. Fundamental reasons why we started the group still apply. I, you know, we, we wanted to you know, write songs and make records. And you know, I know, I know some people see it as being in a group as like a, like a, you know, a, a starting post for a, a career in television or you know, being a, a game show host or something. But you know, I've never actually seen that myself. It's always been, you know, I wanted to make records and and I've enjoyed doing that and I still enjoy doing it. it probably if, even more so probably now because I actually think the group's improved. <laughs> We had a succession of these bassists who were really like, sort of like, uh, you know, like big mouthed people. I think I don't know, maybe we were just like unlucky or something, um, and we were just a bit sick of it really because we you know we wanted to be the bosses of the group. So uh, I, I did say uh, an introverted bassist required, and I think he was going to put a note saying I'm too shy to to, you know, to answer the advert, but I think he was talked out of it by his friends. Before we go back. What about those secret smiles that you were giving to him? Oh, just somebody you met. Well, I go out of my way and this is the thanks that I get. Yeah. I'm just a slave to your greed. I'm not the kind of boyfriend that you need. But if you'd like me to go, you'll get no trouble from me just so long as I know. Oh. I don't care anymore Nobody's twisting your arm Here's the key, there's the door Oh well, that's fine I don't care anymore Nobody's twisting your arm When you're in groups, it's not just like a job It's like, you know, you establish these relationships And it's almost like, you know, you know, losing a friend as well as uh, you know, losing a guitarist. So it was obviously, I think it, we probably hurt his pride a little bit. The most recent change, bringing Paul in, I think you'll be speaking to you later. And uh, that was, uh, you know, partially brought about because our old guitarist, Peter Nevy, used to really write the songs. He used to, I used to write all the guitar parts. And uh, it, it, well, A, it was, it's quicker now because you've got two people writing you know, guitar tunes or whatever. And B, uh, it was nice to have a, like a fresh, Input completely, you know, from the creative point of view. I'd heard that uh, they'd uh, got rid of him, and uh, so they just asked a few friends uh, to audition, and uh, but I had to ask them to audition me at the time because I wasn't. I was playing bass guitar, and so they didn't uh, know that uh, I played normal guitar. So uh, 
I like to force myself upon them and uh, run the competition. I think all the lineups have had, you know, different things to offer, and and they've had strengths in different parts. I think I think as time moves on and and you, and you feel like you know there ought to be changes. I didn't like them really until uh, um, their Bizarro record and. Uh, Quite liked a few songs off that. But, uh, yes, from then on, I thought they were really good. But uh, previous to that, I didn't like their jingly stuff. My first concert was in Awesome Bywater, and it just outside Leeds. And we were we were just offered the gig by. Uh, we had a friend who was in a group called Dick Dick Dimorphic. <laughs> I'm sure that I'm sure they're no longer together, but they that was their local venue. And they just said, uh, "Do we want to play there one, one day?" And we did, and uh, it was fine actually. It was, it was a very sort of uh, gothic crowd, really. Everybody seemed to be wearing black. Although it was the mid '80s, and uh, that's what that was the fashion. I've got a tape of it somewhere, I think. And it sounds absolutely awful, but at the time, you know, we, everybody thought, "Oh yeah, we, you know, we've made it now. We're playing on of by water in front of you know 15 people." Or whatever. All right, let's start a run through then. Can you cover the exit sign? You know, one of these groups who sort of appeared from nowhere and suddenly, like, you know, overnight with, a, with like this raging success. It's always been like a very gradual thing. And so we've never, you know, it's never been a shock to suddenly walk out into, into a massive venue because we've actually, you know, last time we played in that time, it's probably a slightly smaller venue. So it's been a gradual thing. And some places are actually not very big at all still. So, uh, you know, if, if, we, if we go and play in uh, Italy or something, we'll probably still play like a really tiny venue anyway, which. Uh, Helps to keep your feet on the ground, I suppose. No. Kind and considerate and uh, very uh, self-deprecating. <laughs> I don't know. I'm probably a bit. Of, I'm probably quite stubborn, I think, and uh, tend to sort of uh, devote so much time and energy to the group that maybe I'm, I'm not, you know, 100% uh, <laughs> able to, you know. Put something into a relationship as, as many people would. I used to be embarrassed really actually singing the songs sometimes because they were like almost like reading out my diaries. But uh, I think you know you, you, you sort of you can learn to distance yourself from, from your work really. Oh well, that's fine. I don't care anymore. Nobody's twisting your arm. Here's the key. There's the door, I don't love you anymore.